Chapter 40. Lights blazed throughout the homestead. Gladers ran about, everyone talking at once. A couple of the boys cried in a corner. Chaos ruled. Thomas ignored it all. He ran into the hallway and then leaped down the stairs three at a time. He pushed his way through the crowd in the foyer, tore out of the homestead and toward the west door, sprinting. He pulled up just short of the threshold of the maze, his instincts forcing him to think twice about entering. Newt called him from behind, delaying the decision. Minho followed it out there, Thomas yelled when Newt caught up to him. A small towel pressed against the wound on his head. A patchy spot of blood had already seeped through the white material. I saw, Newt said, pulling the towel away to look at it. He grimaced and put it back. Shuck it, that hurts like a mother. Minho must have finally fried his last bit of brain cells. Not to mention Galley. Always knew he was crazy. Thomas could only worry about Minho. I'm going after him. Time to be a bloody hero again? Thomas looked at Newt sharply, hurt by the rebuke. You think I do things to impress you, Shanks? Please. All I care about is getting out of here. Yeah, well, you're a regular toughie. Right now, we've got worse problems. What? Thomas knew if he wanted to catch up with Minho, he had no time for this. Somebody, Newt began. There he is, Thomas shouted. Minho had just turned a corner up ahead and was coming straight for them. Thomas cupped his hands. Where were you? What were you doing, idiot? Minho waited until he made it back through the door and then bent over, hands on his knees, and sucked in a few breaths before answering. I just wanted to make sure. Make sure of what? Newt asked. A lot of good you'd be taken with Galley. Minho straightened and put his hands on his hips, still breathing heavily. Slim it, boys. I just wanted to see if it went toward the cliff, toward the griever hole. And, Thomas said, bingo. Minho wiped sweat from his forehead. I just can't believe it, Newt said, almost whispering. What a night. Thomas's thoughts tried to drift toward the hole and what it all meant, but he couldn't shake the thought of what Newt had been about to say before they saw Minho return. What were you about to tell me, he asked. You said we had worse. Yeah. Newt pointed, his, Newt pointed his thumb over his shoulder. You can still see the bug and smoke. Thomas looked in that direction. The heavy metal door of the map room was slightly ajar. A wispy trail of black smoke drifting out and into the gray sky. Somebody burned the map trunks, Newt said. Every last one of them. For some reason, Thomas didn't care about the maps that much. They seemed pointless anyway. He stood outside the window of the slammer, having left Newt and Minho when they went to investigate the sabotage of the map room. Thomas had noticed them exchange an odd look before they split up, as if almost communicating some secret thing with their eyes. But Thomas could only think of one thing. Teresa, he asked. Her face appeared, hands rubbing her eyes. Was anyone killed? She asked, somewhat groggy. Were you sleeping? Thomas asked. He was relieved to see that she appeared to be okay, and he felt himself relax. I was, she responded, until I heard something shred the homestead to bits. What happened? Thomas shook his head in disbelief. I don't know how you could have slept through the sound of all those grievers out here. You try coming out of a coma sometime. See how you do. Now answer my question, she said inside his head. Thomas blinked, momentarily surprised by the voice, since she hadn't done it in a while. <clears throat> Cut that junk out. Just tell me what happened. Thomas sighed. It was such a long story, and he didn't feel like telling the whole thing. You don't know Galley, but he's a psycho kid who ran away, and he showed up, jumped on a griever, and they all took off into the maze. It's really weird. He still couldn't believe it had actually happened. Which is saying a lot, Teresa said. Yeah, he looked behind him, hoping to see Alvy somewhere. 
surely you've let Teresa out now. Waiters were scattered all over the complex, but there was still no sign of their leader. He turned back to Teresa. I just don't get it. Why would the grievers have left after just getting galley? He said something about them killing one, killing us one at night until we were all dead. And he said that at least twice. Teresa put her hands through the bars, rested her forearms against the concrete sill. Just one a night? Why? I don't know. He said it had to do with trials or variables. Something like that. Thomas had the strange urge he had had the night before to reach out and take one of her hands. He stopped himself, though. Tom, I was thinking about what you told me. I said, and, and that the maze is a cold. Being holed up in here does wonders for making the brain do what it was made for. What do you think it means? Intensely interested, he tried to black out the other shouts and clatter rumbling through the glade as others found out about the map room being burned. Well, the walls move every day, right? Yeah. He could tell that she was really onto something. And Minho said they think there's a pattern, right? Right. Gears were starting to shift into place inside of Thomas's head as well, almost as if a prior memory was beginning to break loose. Well, I can't say, I can't remember why I say, well, I can't remember why I said that to you about the code. I know when I was coming out of the coma, all sorts of thoughts and memories swirled through my head like crazy, almost as if I could feel someone emptying my mind, sucking them out. And I felt like I needed to say the thing about the code before I lost it. So there must be an important reason. Thomas almost didn't hear her. He was thinking harder than he had in a while. They always compare each section's map to the one from the day before, and the day before that, and the day before that, day by day, each runner just analyzing their own section. What if they're supposed to compare the maps to other sections? He trailed off, feeling like he was on the cusp of something. Teresa seemed to ignore him, doing her own theorizing. The first thing the word code makes me think of is letters, letters in the alphabet. Maybe the maze is trying to spell something. Everything came together so quickly in Thomas's mind, he almost heard an audible click as if the pieces all snapped into place at once. You're right, you're right. But the runners have been looking at it wrong this whole time. They've been analyzing it the wrong way. Teresa gripped the bars now, her knuckles white, her face pressed against the iron rods. What, what are you talking about? Thomas grabbed the two bars outside of where she held on, moved close enough to smell her, a surprisingly pleasant scent of sweat and flowers. Minho said the patterns repeat themselves, only they can't figure out what it means, but they've always studied them section by section, comparing one day to the next. What if each day is a separate piece of the code, and they're supposed to use all eight sections together somehow? You think maybe each day is trying to reveal a word, Teresa asked, with the wall movements? Thomas nodded, or maybe a letter a day. I, I don't know, but... They've always thought the movements would reveal how to escape, not spelling something. They've been studying it like a map, not like a picture of something. We, we gotta... And then he stopped, remembering what he had just been told by Newt. Oh no. T Teresa's eyes flared with worry. What's wrong? Oh no, 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 oh no, oh no. Thomas let go over the bars and stumbled back a step as the realization hit him. He turned to look at the map room. The smoke had lessened, but it still wafted out the door, a dark, hazy cloud covering the entire area. What's wrong? Teresa repeated. She couldn't see the map room from her angle. Thomas faced her again. I didn't think it mattered. 
what? she demanded. Someone burned all the maps. If there was a code, it's gone. End of chapter 40.